bam, now you have swap rate data from SushiSwap that you scraped with your Selenium bot. Finance family, it's the other brother Adam Gibb Bags, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to scrape swap rate data off of SushiSwap using Selenium and Python. Say that five times fast. First thing, we're gonna pop over to our trusty Google. Go ahead, Google search Selenium Docs Python. Here, first link is our Selenium Docs. We're gonna need this later. If you've never worked with Selenium before, I'll link a video here where I create a scraper. That video is gonna show you how to get started downloading Chrome driver and getting that executable file into your path so you can start using the automation. And quickly, we can come over to our script. I'm gonna copy this URL for SushiSwap here. This is gonna be the first page we open with our Selenium bot. And note that all the code you see in this video is gonna be available on my GitHub. I'll put a link in the description so you can kind of follow along. So we'll pop right back over to our browser. We'll go ahead and enter that in. And then I'm gonna right click and inspect. Now, what I can tell you is they got Christmas mode on this app. So by the time you probably get around to this, this code might not be exactly working, but I'll kind of show you how to get around that and fix it up when they change the HTML structure later. All right, so we'll flip back over to the script. First up, we're gonna import my modules. I mean, there's a ton here, might not use all of them. Then we're going to set a URL. So that's the URL, the page that I showed you. And then next, we're going to create a class. And then this class is going to be our bot. And then just all the way down here at the bottom, we're just calling the class with our URL as the destination to start our scraping activities. So this first couple lines of code that you see here, this is for making your browser headless. So, so if you wanted to run a Selenium bot, but you didn't want to have the browser window pop up, and all of that jazz and you just set this to true but we're gonna leave it to false so you can kind of see it when we walk through so first what we have here is just our webdriver.chrome but we're passing in the options parameter here which it's not gonna really do anything because the default is false and then next we're making a get request to our URL and then this right here as it is is just gonna open up that first page so you'll see a page like this so for this line here the first thing we're doing once we're opening the page is we're looking for a button and then we're gonna click that button and the button is gonna say ethereum mainnet so here's the button on the page and then I want to go inspect this a little further and then we see we have a button here and then if we expand this element like so then we can see our text value here ethereum mainnet now if we quickly flip back over to the selenium docs we can just click on subheading for locating elements then this is going to give us a couple different ways to find element or find multiple elements and then it has all of the different ways that we can find elements by so by xpath is what we're using here and then if you scroll down you can see examples of how to find elements by xpath you can read that up and then there's just a ton of examples on the internet about how to find by xpath so if you review view this value here we're looking for a button where the text is equal to ethereum mainnet and then we're going to click it and then it's going to bring up a window like this next here in the code we're looking for another button where the text is equal to arbitrum one and then we're going to click it so if we come to the page here and then we inspect this element here where it says arbitrum one then it shows us a button and if we expand that button then we have here our text arbitrum one and then that's going to go ahead and click and so that's going to bring us to this page here well now we've changed from ethereum mainnet to arbitrum one so up next on this line of code here we're going to look for a button element that has a div as a child and then where the text is equal to eth and then we're going to click that so this is what we're looking for i'm just going to right click this here and inspect this and then this is showing here so here we can see the button tag and then below it we have the div tag where our value is equal to eth and so then that's going to go ahead and click that here and then it's going to bring up this menu up next in the code what we're going to do is we're going to find an element by id and then we're gonna send keys dpx. So if you flip back over to the docs, you can see you can find elements by ID. And then if you scroll down, there's an example of how to find elements by ID. Now, if we go to the web page here and then we right click and then inspect here, this is gonna show our box here. It's an input and then our ID is right here. So we're just using that to identify that. And then we're gonna send the keys dpx. Then once we've sent the keys, it'll bring us to this menu here. All right, up next, we really want to click that button that says DPX. So we're just going to find by XPath a div tag that contains the class DPX. 
but you'll see it doesn't really contain a class DPX, it actually just has a text. So this contains is like a partial text match instead of an exactly equal text match. But um, when I wrote this originally, the class was DPX, but the code still works. So you know what, I'm just gonna let this one be a mystery and we're gonna click that button. And then it's gonna bring us here. Up next, we're just doing a very similar find by X path, looking for a button with a div as the child and the text is equal to ETH and then we're gonna click. So I'm gonna inspect this here. We can see that there's a button and then we have a div class underneath that has ETH as the value here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click that. It's gonna bring up this menu. Then next, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a find elements. And then this is gonna bring us back a list of elements that match where you're looking for an input tag where the input mode is equal to search. And then we're gonna take the second element on that list and then we're gonna send the keys RDPX through. So if you go down to the bottom of the script here, I just included some extra code that's pretty helpful for searching through find elements. So if you have multiple elements and you wanna see what's the HTML inside, outside, so you can figure out which one's the one that you actually need to click, then this code can be helpful for you to figure that out. So back to the code, we're just gonna take the second element of that list, send the keys through, then it's gonna bring us this menu here. Now this one was a little bit more complex to get working. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding a child element, which is I'm just finding our element that contains our DPX. This is the second element on our find elements request here. Then we're gonna find the parent element of that child element. And then this is how you can do that by XPath. And then again, I'm finding the parent element of the parent element there. we will just call it grandparent element. And we're taking that element and we're gonna click on it so basically all that's gonna do is just click on it for you there up next we're gonna look for input where the title is equal to token amount and then we're gonna send keys on through so basically here we just want to right click and then we want to inspect and then that's gonna bring this up here and we can see that our title is token amount and it's an input tag right here so then we're gonna go ahead and just send the keys 30 right on through all right we're almost to the end of it so last thing we need to do is just pull out this swap right here so if we look at the code we're finding by XPath, but this is the exact XPath. So if the HTML changes, this will break, but it works for now. So to do that, we're just gonna right click, we're gonna inspect, and then we'll right click again here, and then we'll go to copy XPath, full XPath, etc. Then you can just come over here and then paste that in, and then that'll take you directly to where you need to go. But it's very fragile, so if the HTML changes, it will break. So as you can see here from the HTML, there's one, two, three, four, four, five, all separated by spaces. So when you parse it out, it gives you all five of these little sections. We just wanna take the fourth section here that's got the swap rate. And so that's why you see we're doing the text.split and then we're taking the fourth element and then we're gonna print that swap rate right to the screen. But you know, if you checked out my pushover API video here, you could just have them send the swap rate right to your phone whenever it hits a certain value, blah, blah. And then you have like an automated messaging system when you're ready to go do some degenerate gambling on the internet. Great. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna run this whole thing together and just see what happens. All right, great. So here goes the bot, it's running. Opens the menu, clicks Arbitrum 1, opens the token, types DPX, clicks DPX, next it clicks that button for Ethereum, send the keys on through, click the button. Bruh. So I think what happened there was I just had a bad X path. Like I said, it's very fragile. So we're just go ahead and run it again. Awesome. So you just saw it go through there and then here, bam, we have our swap rate. And now you know how to scrape sushi swap. Bam, now you have swap rate data from SushiSwap that you scraped with your Selenium bot. Pretty sweet, right? If you like what you see, let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe to the channel. We are growing very fast. Good to have everybody on board.